Greetings everyone, Archimedes here, and welcome back to the Rickfield Lego video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at something just a little different. Instead of looking at a special way to put two Lego bricks together or so forth, we're going to be taking a look at something a little more fundamental. Today, we're going to be talking about something that holds together every single one of your models, something active in every single LEGO model built in the universe, and practically pretty much everything else as well. In short, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be talking about the internal forces, tension and compression. So let's take a look, shall we? Now, the first thing you might be asking me is, Ursi, just what are tension and compression? Well, they have fairly complicated mathematical descriptions for the physical and mechanical definitions of them, but I think you've probably experienced them in your own life, right? Tension is the thing you feel when you're up really late studying for a big math test, and compression is what you feel when someone sits on your back. Now, these are actually fairly accurate in some way to the actual physical and mechanical definitions. But to be super clear, I'm going to give you a demonstration. Tension is something that describes a force that pulls things apart. Compression is a word that describes a force that pushes things together. Now, a simple way of demonstrating this in your own home, if those two examples weren't enough, is to take a simple white sheet of paper and accordion fold it like this. Then, you can simply see these forces by pushing the sides of the paper in together like this, that would be compression, and pulling them apart, that's tension. And by the way, guys, this gives you a great opportunity to do a little bit of simple citizen science and show off some of your interesting skills by doing this. You can show off this very, very simple trick, and I think it helps demonstrate the concepts a lot more easily up in your head. So do it for yourself. Try it at home. It's not that hard. Well, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that, in short, is tension and compression. That's really the basics of it anyways. Tension is a force that pulls things apart, and compression is a force that pushes things together. Now, for our purposes, that's pretty much all you need to know. Now, there's a lot more complication to do with them, but for now, the explanations of these titles for forces I think is pretty good. However, there's only one other thing that you might want to be concerned about. That is the fact that forces can act on a member, a piece in a model pretty much simultaneously. For example, let's say I take this column of bricks. Now, if I were to bend it outwards like this, what would you say the force that was uh, brought upon it? At first, you'd probably say tension. After all, you're pulling the two pieces apart, right? However, it's not quite that simple. While this side right here is experiencing tension by pulling things apart. This side right here is experiencing compression. This side is being pushed together. You don't believe me? Well, then check it out with the simple paper model. If this represents the member that we were looking at, this column like this, as you can see when I bent it, one side compresses, the green lines are closer together, and the other side is experiencing tension. The members, the green lines, are expanding apart. But that's getting a little over our heads for now. That's pretty much all you need to know. Tension and compression are descriptive terms for forces that act on pretty much everything in nature. Compression pushes things together. Tension pulls things apart. Tension and compression can work on a member pretty much simultaneously, pushing them and pulling them at the same time. Now, that's fine and all, and I think we've covered the 
basic ideas of what tension and compression are. However, now I'd like to put them into practice in the Legos that we build with. After all, that's why we're here, right? Now, if you come to think about it, we use tension and compression quite a lot when we're Lego building. After all, anytime you want to stick two Lego pieces together, you use compression to, to sp push them together, and you use tension to pull them apart. That's right, you've secretly been, been doing special physics science for most of your entire Lego building career, and you might not have even known it. Isn't that great? Now, let's look at the second uh, ramification of this. What this means is that when we put Lego pieces together by means of compression, that means that the Lego joint, the normal Lego brick joint like this, is strongest in compression. And I think you can see this for yourself. I can put a tremendous amount of pressure squeezing these two sets of pieces together, and they are not going to budge. In fact, I think you can probably stand on something like this, and it wouldn't shatter at all, or even cause too much significant damage to the pieces. However, with only a medium-sized force, I'm capable of using tension, pulling these pieces apart. So thus, the Lego stud and two block connection is strongest in compression and weakest in tension. If you think about it, the same really applies to pretty much every single two-piece Lego connection in all of Lego connection dump. If you think about it, pins to tubes are very weak in tension. You can pull them apart very easily. After all, that's how we can easily disassemble Technic models. But as you just saw there, they're easy to compress, and this member is actually pretty strong, despite being very small. You cannot get this to compress and break. The same occur applies for axle connectors. Once again, axles to cross holes pull apart very easily, tension, but are very strong in compression. Now, so far we've been talking about Lego joints. So, for example, the stud and two block connection or the pin to hole connection. However, we really haven't discussed the structural strength, the uh, tendency for tension and compression in individual Lego pieces. Now, I can pretty much tell you this. Lego pieces of all kinds are very, very strong in compression. You can pretty much squeeze pretty much any Lego piece, and it will be very strong compression. It can hold a great load. However, a lot of Lego pieces can be slightly weaker in tension. For example, we have uh, axles, for example. Pretty much any time the thinner a uh, piece is. Now, we've been talking about joints so far and their strengths and weaknesses in tension and compression. After all, we have bricks, the stud and two block connection, great in compression, not so great in tension. And the same with the pin to hole connection. However, we really haven't talked about the individual structural strengths of individual pieces. Now, I can really preface this by saying this. I think you can probably all figure out that most LEGO pieces are pretty strong in tension and compression. After all, if you try to bend a LEGO brick, it takes a lot before you can actually snap one. I think it took all of the 200 and some pounds of a few people stepping on my LEGO bricks in order to get them to be crushed. And the same applies for most members. However, with tension and compression, however, there are a few basic rules to think about. Now, the most pressing concern here is really tension. I can tell you that pretty much every Lego piece in your Lego connection collection will be pretty strong in compression. I could go over the relative strengths and weaknesses of pretty much every single Lego piece in your collection, but that would take a really long time, and frankly, I have other things to do, and so do you. So I will shorten it by saying this. An easy way of measuring the relative strengths in tension and compression of 
a member is by looking at the cross-section of that member. Ooh, wait, wait, you said cross-section? Yeah, so the cross-section of a member is a, when you take a line perpendicular to the longest side of the model, and you take a look at that two-dimensional side, and that area of that space. Uh, so, what did you say again? Well, pretty much the cross section is on the smallest or the shortest side of a member. You take a look at it in two dimensions. So, for example, of this member, this is the long. These are long sides, but this is a short side. You take a look at the two-dimensional shape of this. Uh, the area of this, for example, is four studs, and this would be the cross section of this Lego column. Make sense? Now. If you take that cross-section, there's a handy little ratio you can have. The area of the cross-section of a member is directly proportional to the amount of force it can withstand, pretty much. So that means that between this member here and this member here, this member here will be four times stronger in tension and somewhat, somewhat similar in compression than this member right here. Does that make sense? After all, this member is one-fourth the size of this member, right? One, two, three, four sets of this and this. Fancy math aside, that just pretty much means that the larger and thicker the member, the greater it will be able to resist tension and to a certain degree compression as well. If you look at this example here, remember when we looked at this connection earlier, these two pieces? Now, I can tell you with certainty that it's pretty easy to break this. I mean, I can break it without just my fingers. However, this connection here is four times stronger than that one. It requires me to actually put some decent force in it to split the two apart using tension. And yes, compression is just a little different, Still, the basic idea remains. The bigger the thing you have, the greater surface area you have between the two connections, the greater it will be able to withstand these forces. So, fine, you tell me. I think I kind of already got this, RC. Did it really require an entire video about it to tell me? Well... I get that this is a pretty basic idea. I mean, usually bigger stick is a lot harder to break than smaller stick, right? Or it's a lot easier to step on a bug than your dog. Just makes logical sense. The bigger the thing it is, the harder it is to break it. Well, that's very true and all. But there's one little catch that I just want you to remember when you're building your Lego models. If you really think about it, pretty much every basic Lego model you make, for example, this house here, this is Green Grocer from the Lego Modul Modular Builders ser series, is made up of stacked bricks, all these bricks held in compression. If you think about it, this is pretty strong, right? If I put my weight at the very top of this, so for example, right here, I could push down with a lot of strength and it would remain very sturdy and strong. However, of course, as we said before, that means that if I pulled up on this, I might be able to break it using tension. And that right here is how most of basic LEGO models are built. It's pretty simple. We build in layers, brick upon brick upon brick upon brick. And that's nice and strong. But tell me, dear builders, what would happen if we turned this sideways? Now, in your LEGO models, probably the greatest fiend you will ever face, and your greatest help, is gravity. Now, gravity is going to be the main thing that is going to supply these compressive and tensile forces. Gravity will push your models together. So if they're made out of stacked bricks like this, if they're made in nice, even, easy rows like this, 
gravity will keep them together. It will hold that thing in a nice tight position, and you'll be able to zoom it around your room or set it on your desk or so on and so forth. But as I just posited before, what would happen if you turned it sideways? What if you have a stack of bricks that is now facing this direction? Perhaps if you want some kind of snazzy looking detail. I often do this using uh, angle, angled bricks to get a curved shape on a spaceship, for example. Now, here, now, gravity isn't necessarily helping you with that compressive power of your Legos. Now, it's hindering you. After all, gravity is pushing down, like this. Now, gravity is providing this tensile force, this force in tension, and that is going to weaken your Lego models. Now, in a small scale like this, as you can see, gravity really isn't doing me much of a problem. As you can see, this thing isn't going to fall apart pretty soon. But what if this got heavier? What if your load right here started to become heavier? What if for, say, let's stick this bigger chunk of Lego on the end? You might not be able to notice it, but you can see there's this little crack right here that's starting to form. These bricks are starting to get a little heavier. That tension is starting to get stronger. The force of gravity plus all this weight on the end is beginning to weaken this joint. This is getting to be too tense for this connection. Eventually, what's going to happen, dear builder, is when I add enough weight, this whole thing will collapse and break. And this can be pretty harmful in your LEGO models. If you want a practical example of this, you can take a look at my first pinball machine, my uh, Asteroids-themed pinball machine. There, I was struggling with this exact problem. The sidewalls of the pinball machine were built just like this, with the bricks facing sideways, 90 degrees to what their normal position would be, right? Now, it had a lot of weight on there, all those layers of bricks on top. What happened was the sides of the machine began to bow out, and eventually the whole thing collapsed. And so, I write this video, dear builder, to warn you of the hazards and the help that tension and compression can provide you in your models. So, to recap, tension and compression are forces, or rather descriptive terms for forces, that are used every day in the wonderful world we live in. Tension pulls things apart, and compression pushes them together. Pretty much every single LEGO connection is based on compression. We push LEGO bricks together to make stacks. The same applies for pins. Tension releases, compression pushes them together. And pretty much everything else you can possibly think of. What this compressive strength means is that when you use these Lego pieces in compression, they're very, very strong, but when you use them in their in intention, not so much. This not so much when it comes to tension can prove fatal in your models. But how exactly do we counteract these powerful forces? Well, one of the simplest ways is using a brace to hold a member in compression or tension. But that's a matter for another episode. One last thing. One of the ways that you can really play around with this idea, and the way that I really learned about it, aside from simple demos like the paper accordion as we demonstrated before, is a software I found called West Point Bridge Designer. Now, it was a really cool program where you got to build a bridge out of real-world materials. You got to specify the material, and you got to specify the size, and had to build a bridge that would support a whole army of bread trucks across it. Now, I used the last time I used that software was in 2006, and thusly, that was a little outdated. However, it was a great way to demonstrate the forces of tension and compression. It explained to you how to use them properly in your model, and it would demonstrate what, how they would work, and when they went wrong in your model, you could see it very, very clearly. So, once I find a safe, debugged version of that software, I promise I will post you a lovely link in the description. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you liked this video. I hope that it was interesting, or informative, or at least that it entertained you for a little while. If you did, in fact, like this video, please comment, rate, or subscribe. If you didn't like this video, still 
please comment and rate. And if you really want, still, please subscribe too. I want to hear what you have to say would make my videos, my channel, different and better. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I bid you all farewell. My name is Archimedes36, and I'll see you next time.